Once again, welcome church family and all of our friends that tune in on these Wednesday nights in a virtual concept of our Wednesday night worship service in person. We're looking forward to getting back to that time. But right now, this is our time of devotion in the middle of the week, recharging our spiritual batteries. And we have this wonderful Bible study for you tonight. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity of studying your word. Thank you, Father, that we have this word as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's enjoy our Bible study for tonight. 855, God's family. 855. We're part of the family that's been born again. Part of the family whose love knows no end. For Jesus has saved us and made us his own. Now we're part of the family that's on its way home. And sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. And though some go before us, we'll all meet again just inside the city as we enter in there'll be no more parting with jesus we'll be together forever god's family and sometimes we laugh together Sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven. God's family. Good evening, church family. It's time to begin our lesson tonight, our Bible class. It was good to see you Sunday. I can't wait to see you again next Sunday. We're so close to getting back to normal. It won't be long. Tonight's a very important lesson. It's going to be a very short lesson, but it's very important, and it's for every single one of us and what we what we should do or what we must do but let's start with a prayer before we begin all right let's pray dear heavenly father thank you so much for blessing us so richly thank you for our church family father thank you for the love that we have for each other father thank you for your word thank you for christ that you sent down the cross that we might have a chance the opportunity to live with him and with you in heaven one day Father, please guide us and keep us. Help us to always put you first. Help us to bring others to you. Be with those that are suffering, those that are struggling. And Father, let us always in everything we do, strive to be an example to bring others to you. We love, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, like I said, tonight's lesson, it's gonna be very short and it's gonna be very straight to the point, but it's something that we need to take action on. And I like action points. Um, doing what I do in, in, in my business, when I find a problem, I identify the problem, I write down the problem or the obstacle, 
then I develop action steps to overcome that obstacle. And right now, brothers and sisters, we have an, we have an obstacle to overcome. And the elders are doing the best that they can with this obstacle. And it's the fact that we cannot fellowship. But here's the rub. Here's what's wrong. I've talked to several new members of the congregation. These are people that have placed membership since last March, since we started the lockdown, the shutdown, since we didn't have fellowship or, or even worship. We were, everything was online. And now that we've started coming back and, and we're wearing masks and we're social distancing, these people have let me know that they don't feel that this congregation is very friendly. And I tell them all the time, this is the friendliest, most loving congregation. And I tell them right now, it's just a, a, a crazy time in our country. And, and, and our elders are doing everything they can, they can. So that is why we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, it's time that we step up. And I want to read this. I want to read 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Because brothers and sisters, this is called, the 1 John is, the theme of it is the fellowship barometer. And see, right now we have that problem because we aren't able to truly fellowship. We're not able to hug each other. We're not able to go and sit and have a meal in a, a fellowship hall. And so the new members that have placed membership since the middle of last year to now, they don't really know us. They, they don't feel loved. So we've got to come up with what we can do personally, individually, and as brothers and sisters to bring them into the fold and let them know that they're loved. I want to read this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation or the sacrifice of atonement for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And brothers and sisters, there's no doubt in my mind that we are the most loving congregation, but there is some doubt in our new members. So this is where our action steps come in. And I want you guys to do this. I want you to either mentally or physically write down some action steps you're going to take when you get to church Sunday on Sunday morning. Those of you that are attending and not just virtually, but those of you that are attending on, on, uh, in person on Sunday, what are you doing? Are, are we just going to our seat, sitting there, worshiping, pulling up the mass, taking the Lord's Supper, and then getting out of the building? Brothers and sisters, we need to figure out a way to fellowship with one another and safely. I'm not asking you to risk your health, but I think we can stay six feet apart. And I think we can see somebody that we haven't seen before or met before and walk up to them and say, hey, I'm I'm John in love. Welcome to the Church of Christ. Oh, you're, you've already placed membership? Wonderful. Welcome. And then if you feel comfortable, because my wife and I, we've already had the corona, so it doesn't scare me. I have no fear of the coronavirus. I can't get it anymore. I, I won't get it anymore. And let's invite that person out to eat. Let's invite them out to lunch. If you, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, just acknowledge their presence. Tell them, hey, I'm glad you're here. When things get back to normal, we're going to have fellowship. We're going to invite you over. But look for those different members because I've, I've spoken to two different people that have told me that they just don't feel this is a comfortable congregation. And as you and I both know, this is the most loving congregation. And let's always remember that. Let's always strive to go out of our way to meet and greet everyone. And I, I know it's impossible right now. And it's, that's what's so frustrating for me because I'm a people person. I like to walk down the rows and shake everybody's hands before the service starts. Hi, I'm John Inlow. It's nice to meet you. Where are you from? What you doing? All right, I'm glad you're here. 
Oh, you're a member. You're a place of membership. Wonderful. Let's go out to eat afterwards. We can't do that. So come up with a goal. Come up with something that you can do, whether it's get their name and address and write them a welcome letter or their email and write them a little note or their phone number. And let's send them a text and let them know that, hey, we love you and you are welcome and you are part of this brotherhood and, and you're welcome to this congregation. But anyway, guys, I love you. Just a seed for thought tonight. Think about that. Think about what we can do because our poor elders, I continue to pray for them because they are doing everything they can do for us, not only to provide for us spiritually, but they're doing everything to provide for us physically, to keep us safe, to keep sickness out of the church. You know, um, I don't think the elders have ever had to deal with something like this before. Not in our lifetimes. In 1918, they had the Spanish flu. That was That's about it. Jerry Moxley might have been around then. But uh, no, um, keep Jerry in your prayers. Because Jerry's having to go through a lot uh, right now. Tell him we, and Let him know we love him by keeping him in your prayers. Send him some notes. But uh, brothers and sisters, let's always think about what we can do to make others feel loved and to, to bring others into the fold, make them feel a part of our congregation. I love you. Have a wonderful Wednesday night. Continue to read through James for, uh, I'm sorry, first John, the, the fellowship barometer and see if you can come up with more ideas of how we can better fellowship during this time of masking and separation. I love you. Have a great evening. I'll see you Sunday. Once again, we're so glad to have you with us tonight. And this is a wonderful study. If you've been studying your Bibles and you want to be baptized into Christ, please contact us. Let's help you put on Christ in baptism and live the wonderful Christian life. If you've already been baptized into Christ, but haven't been living like you should, call us and let us pray with you and for you that we might be what God wants us to be. May God bless you and keep you.